Hi everyone, this is Rob Roy and welcome to the LA Wave Options US Market Update. Bitcoin continues this big breakout move. How far can we expect it to go? And gold suffers what some are calling a flash crash. What was the cause? The dollar moving up? Interest rates ticking higher? And we're on a quest to hit 25,000 subscribers. Our YouTube metrics tell us that on average, half of you watching this video aren't subscribers. What are you waiting on? Hit that like button, become a subscriber, and you'll be notified immediately when one of these videos is posted. I tell you what, I'll sweeten the pot. If this video helps us to reach that 25,000 subscriber goal, I'm gonna give away five of our full alert subscriptions. All you have to do to enter is one, be a subscriber, and two, many of you are aware that my first career right out of college was as a golf pro. So just in the comments section, list who you think my current favorite PGA Tour player is. I'm going to list my top three. All you have to do is get one to be entered into the drawing. And in this video, we've enabled the chapters feature. So if there's a specific subject that you want to move forward to, you can just click there and it'll fast forward right to that subject. Let's take a look at the charts. At the time of this recording, it is 2.40 a.m. Eastern Time on Monday night slash Tuesday morning. Currently, the futures are down just over three points. Seems like a sell program came in about 9.45 Eastern Time tonight. Futures dropped about 10 points and been clawing their way back since. Taking a look at the chart today, you can see that we are closing right in towards the point of that upward pennant pattern that we've had. If we take a look at the DMI, we still have the ADX diving down, but we had a little bit of a cross there with the positive directional indicator moving higher, the negative moving lower, and then today, the positive ticked down, the negative ticked up, ah, just kind of uh, going along with this uh, consolidation uh, that's been occurring here over the past couple of months. If we go back and look at the moving averages, currently we are above the 10-day moving average, but we also look at the fact that the market has been bouncing off that 50-day moving average all the way up on this move. We've noted that before, but I thought we'd add something else into the mix here. Here is a one standard deviation channel of the entire wave five, and you can see that it really has been a pretty standard uptrend, kind of in that 45-degree angle that you hear me talk about a lot. Uh, that I uh, prefer when the markets are moving uh, in one direction or the other. And you can see, other than a couple little blips there in September and, and, and October, we've stayed within that one standard deviation. That's just a good old-fashioned normal uptrend. And where we are right now, dead smack in the middle of the channel. So there is room to continue to move to the upside. Remember, we have that 460 target as the LA Wave target on the LA Wave long count, as well as in the zigzag on the weekly chart. Taking a look at gold, as I said in the entry, a lot of people are calling this a flash crash in gold. You can see Friday's move followed by uh, uh, some follow through today. Friday, we had this support area here at 165. So you wonder, could that hold? Taking a look at the 10 day moving average, you're getting just a little bit oversold. Apparently not enough because we had follow through to the downside today. And now we're coming down. It looks like we're gonna test these lows down here in the 160 area, maybe as low as uh, uh, 158 or so. However, we are getting a bit oversold now, and so a little bit of a snapback uh, maybe in the cards for gold, but it does look like we want to test that 160 level. What's caused this? Why did gold go to the downside like this? Well, also in the entry, you talked about the dollar rising to the upside. You can see the strong move the past two days in the dollar, if you've heard me talk in any of these videos, you know that I'm a fan of a, uh, a stronger dollar, even though you know, a lot of countries want their currency as weak as possible. Uh, with as much money as we're printing, just out of thin air, I think it's really important for economic stability moving forward to have a fairly strong dollar. It's just my opinion. Uh, another thing that's interesting about the dollar is this, with this move to the upside here, we've um, actually qualified a zigzag pattern. So you can see the next target would be the C wave, potentially up here around 93.80 on the dollar, and that would mean a, uh, a new recent high, breaking that high that occurred back in March. So looks like uh, the strength of the dollar is uh, going to be here for a while. Looking at the 10-day moving average, a little bit overbought here, maybe some resistance at this FIB extension level, the 38.2% level, also nearing those recent highs. So maybe the dollar consolidates a little bit. It looks like it wants to break that high. Interest rates, talked about interest rates ticking higher. 
Is that a cause of uh, gold's so-called flash crash? I think it's a combination of both myself. It was just kind of a double whammy that hit gold and people hit the panic button. And so that's uh, um, my opinion. Uh, here you can see the 10-year, and what's interesting between the two is they are in lockstep. We mentioned that in the last couple of recordings. A while back there, they weren't uh, uh, as coordinated as this, but both with the exact same LA wave pattern, bounces to the upside. We haven't labeled the wave four yet, uh, but it looks like maybe that's where we're heading with interest rates, but a little bit of a move higher uh, in interest rates. That's a good sign economically. Stronger dollar is a good sign economically. Uh, is that going to push the Federal Reserve to maybe move back again as far as their timetable for at least tapering, if not raising rates? That was a, a kind of a, the third leg of the stool uh, to break uh, for gold, if you will. Uh, and some are even saying that in the uh, Jackson Hole Summit, the Federal Reserve may even start to hint on a tapering program. I don't see that when they just came out. Powell just in his last press conference saying they're not even thinking about tapering yet. So yeah, it's just amazing how fast the media can change things around. You get a couple days of, uh, of different data and now the whole world's changing. I don't think the Federal Reserve is going to do that. So I think things may calm down just a little bit. And take a look at Bitcoin. Boy, there's that zigzag pattern to the downside and the big descending triangle. We talked about this. If you watch the recordings, that fallacy that a descending triangle means that uh, uh, you're going to have a downside breakout. Not true. Any triangle can break either direction. Here we have the upside breakout. And if you're long the crypto, specifically Bitcoin, you'd be excited about the fact that we finally have the follow through. It took breaking that 100% downside extension. Remember, that was the 100% extension to the downside before we went all the way down to 161.8 to satisfy that extended C wave in the downward zigzag. Now we moved up, we bumped our heads against that level, and then we get boom, boom, the break above that with follow through. So when we look at the 10 day moving average, maybe just a bit overbought now, uh, in Bitcoin, so a little bit of a rest may be warranted. Right now, currently live, uh, Bitcoin's pulled back just a little bit, but it looks like we're going to move up here to the 61.8% level. That should be the next point of resistance uh, if we rest a little bit uh, before uh, we go up there and hit that resistance at 48.5. Now, if we break that, we may very well retrace that entire C wave of the zigzag, which means a potential target of 60,000. We'll just have to reevaluate uh, if it breaks above 61.8 or what our technical indicators look like once we reach that area. We like to look at the DMI and that's setting up in a pretty supportive manner of Bitcoin continuing this upward move. Wanted to look at the Qs because the Qs had been uh, uh, leadership for quite a while. Now the chart is starting to resemble the SPY a bit. Still have this uh, same uh, pennant pattern here in the Qs that we do in the SPY. Now, the Qs are in a wave three, where the SPY is in a wave five, so that's certainly uh, a little bit different. But the rest of the pattern looks pretty similar here just recently, uh, as I said. So we take a look at the DMI. Even the DMI looks identical to the SPY with the ADX diving down and the positive directional indicator on top, but moving lower. The only difference would be that the negative directional indicator where it had ticked up on the SPY, ticking lower here, but pretty similar on these charts. Looks like the market's gonna make a little bit of a breakout move here from this uh, ascending pennant pattern in the not too distant future. Let's take a look at the VIX and see if that gives us any idea of which direction. Well, here we are, right back down towards that 16 level. Are we gonna break below it? We would if we break to the upside out of that pennant, or at some point, are we going to have a significant breakout of this huge descending triangle here in the VIX? Yikes, that would be a little bit scary to see that, but you can see we have plenty of room here for a few more bounces running into that upper trend line before we start to move into the point and start talking about some sort of a significant breakout move. So for now, we're in that channel, and then we take a look at this uh, uh, pennant pattern. It's a little shallow, but not that uh, poorly formed, and see if, uh, if we can break to the upside from here. As a reminder, don't forget to enter that contest. Let's get these subscribers to 25,000 so that we can have that giveaway for five full alert subscriptions. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great week. Look forward to talking again soon. Take care, everybody.
If you like these recordings, I'd like to invite you to join our new Trade Finder Live, where each and every week we do a live webinar where we talk about the market, but we also go a little more in depth into the technical analysis system that we utilize to forecast where the market's likely going to go, and also to identify trading opportunities. Get your free subscription today. Take care, everybody.